it's going on three years since I moved from the Northeast to the Midwest. And I purchased this property at a premium at the time. We drove from New Jersey uh, down to Kentucky on our way to, I, I believe it was Passover or Tabernacles. I, I think it was Tabernacles. And the lady who is subsequently become a, you know, a good uh, friend on Facebook and has fed me a lot of good information about the area, met myself and she said, you know what, I have three offers on the table, but I like your spirit. And if you make me an offer, I'll sell this property to you. So, of course, I gave her an offer of the purchase price, uh, which she requested for the land. And she accepted the offer. And I went ahead and did a one-year owner finance. And a spirit came up on me, and I ended up paying off the property in six months. So I put a large chunk down. And, you know, just went ahead and and got the, uh, the the deed, got the title, and you know I was off to the races from there. Since I have moved, the property values in this county, in this area, has damn near tripled. Meaning that if I wanted to sell this property, I can turn around and sell the property for more than twice than what I purchased it for. What's going on? What's going on? Well, in my opinion, what's going on is that there's a there's a real estate bubble across the board. And as you print more money in this debt-based fiat system, the value of everything uh, uh, goes down because it takes more dollars to purchase the same goods and services. So there's nothing that's really changed. I mean, I've done a lot of brush clearing out and improvements on the land. Uh, However, I've not done uh, twice the improvements in terms of the land uh, that I purchased the property for. So there's no real reason why the purchase price should have doubled. Uh, So there is uh, inflation in housing. Uh, we're seeing the inflation take place across the board. And I say all this to say that a lot of people have asked me, uh, you know, is there property in the area? Uh, And the answer is yes, but there's very few people. As a matter of fact, if there's anybody that I know that can come down and put $100,000 to purchase a property. There's very few people that have that kind of, I mean, we see the statistics. We see that um, we have uh, 1.5 trillion in student debt. We have over a trillion in credit card debt, personal loan debt. Uh, We have, uh, I think, 30 trillion in, in, in mortgage debt. Because see, when you have a mortgage, you really don't own a home. You own a note for 30 years. And if you default on that, Let's say you've been paying for that property for 29 years or 10 years and you got a 15-year mortgage and you default on that, that loan, you get nothing back. You get absolutely nothing back. They take your home. uh, You paid all of that money into it. Uh, This is why we say uh, go ahead and purchase a, a, a piece of land and develop it in time so that you don't have to worry about if a situation comes along in your life, you don't have to worry about being homeless because the land is paid for. Yeah, sure, you got to pay property taxes. You have to pay property taxes for the roads and things like that. And out in rural country land, property taxes are real cheap. I mean, I pay less than $500 a year in property taxes. So, you know, 
this is why we say don't get in a debt. Uh, and if you can, at best, do an owner finance. And still, you're going to be hit with the interest. I had to pay the interest uh, that she requested on the owner finance anyway. Uh, on the amount that I did not put, uh, 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 that I did not pay completely. So if the property cost 50000 I put down 40000 I still had to pay interest on the 10000 so this is, you know, and, and then in my area, you know, there was a lot of, of properties right next door to me. Uh, there's about three properties next door to me. One, the man ain't selling. Uh, he's not going to sell and it's wooded. I mean, you would have to spend a tremendous amount of time, energy, and effort to clear out this wooded property, but he's not selling. It. It's been in his family and the guy I think lives in Milwaukee somewhere, Wisconsin somewhere. Uh, the property next door to that went uh, on sale twice uh, but now you had somebody come in and they purchased that property and the property next door to that property and they were looking to purchase the property next door to me property good property in a good location and the cut is is going for a premium and 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 hey you know uh, you know I even think if I wanted to sell my property to the people so that they can literally own the block. They buy it and they're looking to buy, build a nice big home on it. What do you think is going to happen to the property value that I have? It's going to go up and it's already been going up. But if they put a nice home on that property, uh, uh, it's going to go up. And that is a property next door to me. Now, mind you, I can't see any of the homes because. Uh, you know, the properties are, are, are so large and sectioned off in a way that, you know, you have your privacy. I mean, I can run down the entirety of my property butt naked uh, and nobody would see uh, me outside of the property or on the road. I mean, you know, I have a long driveway. You know, I like the privacy. And uh, that's one of the good reasons why you're in a rural area and, you know, off of the back roads and stuff because you have that privacy. But you know, I say all this to say this again, you know, property values have increased so much that the average person cannot afford um, property in this day and age. And, you know, you have all of the debt. A lot of people don't even have $500 uh, to deal with an emergency situation, let alone to take five, six thousand $6,000 to even buy an acre of land, to even buy an acre of land to generationally build something off of. So people are going to have to, and people are going to be forced to stack up on land that's paid for. Me personally, uh, and how I've been taught, you know, you want to get a piece of land and you want to pay for it and get, make sure it's paid for it or pay it off as quickly as humanly possible. Um, uh, we're going to be forced to live together. And there's already people that are in the process. Some is going to take months. Some it may take a year or so to move in that direction. But people are getting the understanding. I speak to people all the time and I give them, you know, the process in which it takes to, you know, move uh, to the covenant. And there are other places that, uh, you know, once there's a vetting process, because people got to get vetted. I mean, people just really got to get vetted because people's minds, I mean, they're just off. I mean, I can just tell you some off the chain stories uh, of what I've experienced in the last uh, three years. Uh, what folk, people are just, they, they just ain't right in the head. So, um, but people are going to be forced to live together in a communal situation because of the debt, because of the of the um, uh, uh, because of the uh, the economic situation in this country, and it's so much better to pull your resources together with other like-minded people so that everybody can benefit. You know what you can do uh, with you know three, four brothers, three, four families uh, that's all working to chip in to, uh, to save together to build something. You know what you can do in that kind of situation. The problem is people, are, uh, it, it's sad that, you know, the, the most selfish people that I've run across is the brokest people that I've run across. But we're going to have to uh, learn how to stop being selfish and pull our resources together so that, you know, our children and our children's children can have. I mean, uh, uh, 
this is the way we're going. I mean, I just see it as clear as day. A lot of people um, are, are planning for this inevitability. And you're going to have to, you know, just accept the fact and get used to the notion that, hey, you're going to have to work together. You're going to have to work together with, with, with other folks because you know how much time, effort, and money, and energy it takes to develop a piece of land? Um, you will fail as a rugged individual, but you will survive and thrive as a member of a tribe and community. And that's what we're trying to get, you know, uh, with RTA and a lot of other, uh, 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 you know, uh, not, I'm sorry, let me take that back, a few <laughs> other assemblies and ministries are trying to do is get people to think community, think tribally, uh, to pull your resources together because, again, it's getting, to, I mean, it's getting bad out there. I mean, it is bad. I, I talk to people all the time. Uh, and you know what their number one problem is? Debt. Uh, they can't even pay their the, the bills because, you know, these loan sharks that they've gotten involved in, uh, the banks, the credit cards, uh, the student loans, uh, because, you know, you can't, you can't default on student loans. You can't default on student loans. Student loans are there. And there's nothing that you can do, uh, you know, to default on them damn things. You know, you've got to pay it. It's indentured servitude. You're in, you're an indentured slave at that point in time. Once you've taken out these loans for you know for worthless degrees that you can't even get a job in this economy. So you know, and and uh, this is months in the making. I, I meant to you know make this video, but you're gonna have to learn to pull your resources together, get with like-minded people, and this is why it's good to uh, you know develop relationships. Why this internet. That is up and why, uh, you know, because all this censorship on YouTube, all of these people getting kicked out of YouTube and Facebook and stuff and, and Twitter being banned and, and whatnot. <sighs> time is getting short. I mean, time has been short, but time is just getting exponentially shorter. So use this time to develop solid relationships with folks. Uh, that are doers, that are making things happen, and join a team. Join somebody that is doing something. If not, hey man, you go. Uh, many of you suffering now. Many of you suffering now. But you know, uh, you know, uh, th we're such a stiff neck and stout-hearted generation. I mean, what what do you do? You know, uh, many of you, you know, a lot of people have already hit rock bottom. Hey. Do what you may. Do what you want. You know what I mean? Me personally, you know, we're, we're, we're making moves, uh, you know, and I surround myself with people and, 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 and submit myself to people that are making moves and that are making things happen and are giving good sound uh, direction and wisdom and guidance of what you need to do. So, uh, in conclusion, you know, again, I, you know, I'll say this, you know, develop some relationships, get around people that's doing something. Uh, uh, you know, to save yourself from this untorn generation. Uh, shalom.